the most obvious tool in a 3D animator's toolbox, the desktop computer. If you're new to 3D animation or you want to get started, getting yourself a proper desktop computer or at least know what the components to look for to best handle your animation program and work files will fundamentally get you on the right track. In this video, we're going to break down the components for Beastly Computer Build as well as a sneak peek under the hood of my own computer build, Excalibur. Hey guys, this is Cliff from Roundtable Studios where we make animation video and show you how you can make yours too. And in order to make animation videos, we're going to need a computer. But where do we start? What do we look for? And which component is more important than the other? Before we look at components, I want to briefly look at the option between store-bought and custom built computers. There was a time where building a custom build was the only way to get something powerful enough to handle 3D programs. Nowadays, that is no longer the case. Animation programs are pretty complicated programs that need some power in order to run it, but in this digital age, they are making computers stronger than they are making animation programs complicated. So if you are not up to making your own computer, still be on the lookout for certain components to get the best bang for your buck, but you shouldn't have to feel that off-the-shelf computers won't get the job done. The first step to pick is your processor or the CPU, which is the brain of the computer. It does all the thinking, so you want to pick something suitable. Most programs are optimized on running on 4 cores, so you don't really have to worry about getting something crazy that's like 12 cores that you think you need. I have the AMD Ryzen 3 1200 4 core, but a Ryzen 5 1600 processor may be a little more suitable if you have a little extra cash to throw at it here. Next up is your motherboard. This is really important only if you're building your own computer as it's really just a layout of where all these components are put on. The main thing here animation wise you want to be mindful of is how much memory or RAM can the motherboard handle so you want to plan accordingly. I have the MSI B350M Gaming Pro which works well with an AMD setup. Next up is your case. This closely matches up with your motherboard, so you want to match your motherboard against your case, and a great place to check that is PCPartPicker.com. A lot of these cases have very nice features for PC building, but any case will do. So honestly, I would just go ahead and pick base of looks. I have a Tesseract Deep Cool Mid Tower case, which I honestly picked because it had the name Tesseract in it. Memory or RAM is pretty much an easy step to figure out. Personally, I honestly wouldn't do anything under 16 gigs of RAM, especially if you want to use game engines like I use to render, as that would prove pretty difficult. You want to go with the largest capacity available in the fewest number of sticks. So a 2x8 kit for 16 versus a 4x4. This gives you room to expand in the future as well as preserve dual memory bandwidth. I carry the Kingston Fury 16 gig Next category is your video card. Make sure you match your video card against your processor. You don't really want to pick one that's wildly faster than the other. The main thing to keep in mind is the size if you're building your computer from scratch. But finding one that supports, at the very least, dual or maybe triple monitor play will be a great feature to look at. I carry the XFX Radeon RX 560 1024 4GB video card, which I mostly picked because it matches the lighting. Lastly, but certainly not least, is a storage. The big thing to look out here is hard drive versus an SSD or solid state drive. SSDs are far superior than hard drives as it makes a difference in loading times for your operating system, programs, and applications. If there's one category you want to spend money in, this is the one. Hard drives are far less expensive than SSDs. If budget is a little bit of a concern, but you don't want to miss on the SSD capability, most people, including myself, install both drives and use the SSD as the operating system drive and run programs with all the file storage on the hard drive. As far as power supply goes, I honestly say go with anything 80 plus bronze and above is great and check it against your parts in PC Part Picker. Um, and in risk of starting to sound like a tech channel, as long as you get your computer working, any power supply with 500 watts or higher should be good. I have the Corsair 550 watt 80 plus bronze power supply, which is so silent that I wouldn't even know um, that the computer was on if it wasn't for the lighting. All right, now I know this video is a little bit different than most, but I kind of wanted to show off my computer and make it viable for you guys at the same time. 
If anyone's wondering about my display, it's a 32 inch Element LED HD TV 720p, which I kind of wish I got a 1080p, but maybe down the line I'll upgrade. I hope this answers any questions as to what's important when looking into a computer. And if you have any questions about parts or want some more in depth information, make sure to comment down below. Thanks for watching. Good luck in picking your computer, and I'll see you guys on the next one.